Man United, Spurs, 3-0 to United. That was like, I don't know what accent that was. That like, was like um, Newcastle or something. Newcastle like man. United. <laughs> man United have also won three games in three and are sitting third place. Um, Rach, what do we make of this game? Um, I think they were lucky in the first 20, 25 minutes that Spurs couldn't take their chances mm-hmm. because, my God, particularly in the first 10, 15, they were very pinned back. Oh, Spurs um, look spicy. Oh, yeah. And they will be ruining not uh, not getting those chances. But I think it's indicative of what we'd seen of Manchester United in the past and that sometimes maybe they wouldn't turn those games around and actually mm-hmm. to be able to do that and to, you know, you look at the results of their game so far and you'd be like, amazing. They're mm-hmm. doing they're doing brilliant. Like they're they're playing really well, blah blah blah. You know, you kind of need to look a little bit deeper. I don't think they performed great against Everton. I think Everton were unlucky not to get a point. I think in at the West Ham game, you know, again it's another team who aren't taking their chances. Mm-hmm. So there are potential risk areas or areas that, you know, teams could exploit. Mm-hmm. But it's important for them that they're coming out of those games at wins yep. to not be playing their best and getting the goals goals import more importantly we've spoken about that last season where they were struggling for sure I think um from my perspective I was I was really upset for Spurs I don't think the score necessarily reflected the performance um three nil looks like a very comfortable confident that's what I mean win. yeah and I it, it could have been a completely different game I think that was the thing that I'm quite critical of is Spurs is like you said they had that really spicy 10 or first 15 minutes uh, two really super decent chances you had uh Martha Thomas dribbling in cutting inside oh, I and that, that was in. save yeah it was a beautiful save from Tullis Joyce definitely go and have a look at that because the way that she came out really quickly quick decision making spread her body massive I think she just about got like the end of an ankle onto it and deflected uh, wide which she is amazing she made seven saves she was outstanding absolutely like she's so athletic yeah. looking because she's so sort of um, like she's very like slim isn't she Slight. she's like yeah very kind of like just like a whip it type yeah. vibes <laughs> um, and then you had Drew Spence's uh, long range effort which just went over the bar by a couple of millimetres but then it felt like because Spurs had missed those chances Man United then kind of crept into the game and it mainly came from kind of Spurs messing around at the back I'd say appreciate that they are still sort of working out the kinks and kind of like playing out from the back but sometimes I mean it's a difficult one because you want to say okay we'll keep with that style but also there are moments when you just have to hoof the ball away and I think they got stuck in that kind of decision making um, at the back on occasion which kind of let them creep in this is the thing no you're right this is the thing Robert Villaham is very set in the way he wants to play. For sure. And sometimes it to the sacrifice of the result. And I think if they play really well and the way he wants to play, that's almost like, not more important, but like you need to be under pressure when you're trying to implement a style of play mm-hmm. and not just doing it when it's against a, a team that's not putting you under pressure because then you'll never really embed it in, in the squad. And we're kind of seeing that across a lot of teams this season. Villa, Brighton, they're all really keen to play out from the back and you're sometimes like, Jesus, just hoof it. Get it away. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there needs to be a balance. And I think what we're, we've seen in the past is when a team might come up against, you know, a stacked squad, they'll just sit back, they'll mm-hmm. sacrifice their form, they'll sit back and try and absorb it. And that's not the way these teams want to play. They want to have their own style that they can implement on a game and I appreciate that but there are times when you need to know when to make those decisions and when not to and up against a team like Manchester United with the players they have up front they can put you under so much pressure Mm -hmm. Um, and you know some of the signings they've made as well they're more clinical in front of goal which I think we're seeing as well Um, so yeah a dangerous time to be so committed to that style but I always find it really interesting with a manager whether they're like no we got to keep doing it because we need to get it right stick to it yeah and I I do rate it's kind of like holding your nerve like it's that poker face of it and I I do kind of rate what they're trying to do so no massive criticism from me but I think it's just that it is just on occasion if you need to take the pressure off then take the pressure off yeah Um, well some person who put the pressure on uh, Elizabeth Turland got her first goal for Man United and then got her second just five minutes later Uh, just going to a massive 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 shout out to uh, me Um, I predicted her as this season's top scorer Um, 
my dreams are slowly coming true. Still really, really early days. Um, Bunny and Kiko and Rachel's currently sitting at a uh, top goal scorer with three goals uh, at the moment. So yeah, we're a little way off, but... But a weight off for her yeah. to get the first goal at her new club. 100%. And lovely goals. Beautiful, beautiful goals. Uh, Celine Bazette, uh, absolute pod favourite, uh, got both the assist, a massive, massive performance from her against her former club. Um, yeah, what did you make of what did you make of her performance? Celine or Turland? Got both of them. Um, Turland, I'm just really glad she's got off the mark, and you know because I I kind of bigged her up as a player that can turn maybe not the best quality chances into goals, and mm. how instinctive a goal scorer she was. So yeah. I'm glad she's off the mark. It was that perfect run for the first goal. Like and the, the confidence to just take it. 100%. Yeah, it was beautiful. And the, and the header was wonderful as well. Amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I was I'm really impressed with her. And I know Mark Skinner referenced Erling Haaland in post-match mm-hmm. <laughs> in reference to her. But apparently they actually know each other because they both really? played in the youth ranks of the same club in Norway. And apparently, don't quote me on this, but I am saying it on the pod because Sophie told me, Turlin's brother is Haaland's sister's partner. So there's like a link. What? Yeah. That's you crazy. made that up, surely. An in-law situation. But, what? Um, yeah. That's... Are we going to see a wedding in the future where <laughs> Elizabeth not, Turlin and Haaland, no, not, not them, between both of them. But, but they'll be at potentially the same <laughs> one. Um, but it's just funny that he referenced Haaland. And I think it's the instinctive goal scoring style that he has and that she has. And I think it's just taken her a little while to maybe find her feet. Uh, but I'm really glad she's off the mark because once she's up and running you know you've got like once that once she's got that confidence and to score the type of goals she scored as well she'll be flying and again I'm glad Bizet is getting started getting game time being really effective mm-hmm. um so delighted for her cuz I'm a big fan of hers is that I think for both goals cuz I kind of watched the replays over and over again and like one thing that I really picked out was that there was a massive overload of Spurs players in the box i mean on the first goal so there was i think i counted four uh, four Spurs defenders marking two players perfect run from Turland trying to get in behind same again for the, the the second goal was even worse there was five or six Spurs defenders that i could see and three uh, man united attackers in the box and with both goals it was a matter of turning almost like weaving in and out and then finding the space to do that and that takes like ridiculous levels of concentration and precision yeah and also like the link up between those two players Mm -hmm. whipping that ball in for just the right moment I think yeah it was absolutely beautiful so yeah slight criticism of Spurs maybe not being as tuned on in, in the box, but incredible from Turlin, kind of having that like tenacity. What, um, I, what I don't want to see is Spurs doing that thing where they had a really good season and then go backwards again. Um, I think sure. they're still trying to tweak, find their their team set up like exactly how they want to do it. They're just, I feel like they're just tweaking little things and the performance is there. You see it in the stats, but it's finishing out the games and taking the chances. Well, we've got a really interesting question in from uh, Shelby, who has asked us on Instagram, how much should we read into this really positive start for Man United? Um, I mean, we can't deny it. It's been a really brilliant start to the season for them. Three out of three, uh, matched only by Chelsea in the league so far. Um, obviously, like they have, they've, they've weathered a lot of criticism um, over the past season. Obviously, the, the Barmy Army were stepping up uh, on their kind of comments towards the end of season. But this, do you feel like we've, We've we've put them to bed, or do we think it's it's too early to say? I think it's too early to make an indictment on their season yet. Um, I'd like to see them properly tested. I mean, they were tested against Everton. For sure. um, I have to say, um, you know, and I think they had that, you know, that Chelsea game had it gone ahead would have been a really interesting marker God, yeah. of where they are because maybe for United a better time to play Chelsea as Chelsea kind of find their feet a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever that gets rescheduled it'll be interesting um, but maybe beneficial for Manchester United to have had the opponents that they've had to get themselves on the board and get themselves a bit of a rhythm yeah for sure I think uh, well their next kind of what you think could be a big match up and that's no criticism at all to, to Brighton who they face on uh, Saturday well, actually, the 19th of October because Brighton have been looking pretty spicy themselves yeah. um, but they play uh, Arsenal on the 3rd of November obviously we don't know what the situation is going to be with Arsenal at the moment that's a bit turbulent so yeah I think that'll be a super interesting game I suppose to kind of see Man United pitted against someone like like Arsenal just on the basis of the quality of the talent but Brighton is that Brighton game is, is going to be is <laughs> I think that could be quite an evenly matched it's battle it's going to be fun yeah for sure you're going to go and watch that game uh, I will be in the Dominican Republic but I Ooh. will be watching it 